All right, so welcome to Adobe Bridge 2019. So we're gonna be going over every aspect of how to use Adobe Bridge. So you will notice in this window here, there's Essentials, Libraries, Film Strip, Output, Metadata, Keywords. These basically toggle or change how this screen is set up. So we're gonna start with Essentials and then we're gonna kind of move through and do all of them. So when you open this up, it We'll assume that it's opening up in Essentials, but usually it will open up in the last one of these. So if you use Filmstrip and quit, it should open up back in Filmstrip. But we're gonna start here on Essentials. And so over here we have Favorites, and these are folders that you drag and put over here, or some come by default, of the favorite folders that you access your images through recently. So if I have all my images in pictures, I'm gonna, um, have pictures up here so I can access this and get to my images. If you need to navigate folders to find something that aren't in one of these like quick selections, you're gonna come over here to folders and then you can see all your folders are in here and you can navigate to try to find out where your images are located. So once you pick a folder and you select it, so if I go to pictures and I put background text pictures it's going to bring up those images and have those displayed and you can see here is kind of the path in which i've got to those images from so next we have down here is a filter menu so you can filter what images it finds in bridge and you can use keywords so you can see no keywords or keywords or anything i want by date created by date modified, by orientation. So if I just wanted landscape, I could click on this and we would get rid of three of those. If I just wanted my portrait, I can click on this and it will filter out those. And by camera raw data. So that is filtering images when you are looking for something specific. And you can add to this if you like so you'll see over here if you click on this there's all kinds of different things that you can add to the filters over here to search for certain items for you also have something called collections and collections I'll come back to in a little bit so the next thing that we have up here are just kind of the basic navigation menu so this is your back button this would be your forward button but we haven't gone through anything so we don't need that this little down arrow will bring up your parent folders or your favorites. So this will let you reveal recent items. So any recent items that I've gone to, I can click on that. If you want to return and go back to Adobe Photoshop, Photoshop sorry, you're going to hit this little back button that looks like a boomerang. If you want to get uh, images from an SD card you're gonna select this um, refine we will come back to this just a kind of way to narrow your focus um, within folders and the rest of this stuff we will come back to so that's just the basic windows so what we're gonna do to start this off is go ahead is we're gonna click on this get photos from camera you'll notice sometimes when you open this up for the first time it might ask you, does you want this to be your primary source to get photos from when you insert an SD card? Meaning that when you put your SD card in, it's gonna automatically launch and recognize that an SD card has been inserted so that you can import your images right away into Adobe Bridge. So we're gonna go ahead and click on this. And these are not images I've shot, they're just images that I loaded onto a card here. So you can see it's getting images from my EOS digital card. And if you had a different card or something else that you wanted to get selected from, you could easily go ahead and select that. As you put the card in, it will by default just select every image that you have. If you want to uncheck them, you can uncheck them all. And you can pick specific ones like this one this one that you want to import and say those are the only two but for this demonstration we're going to go ahead and hit check all if your window opens up like this where it's smaller 
you just need to click on the advanced dialog box. I basically always work in the advanced dialog box. So this is where you're picking the images and this is your source. And you're going to say, hey, where do I want these images to go? So in this case, you can see it's picked pictures. So if you want to choose something different, you can hit choose. And it will let you navigate, whether you're on Mac or Windows, you can navigate to any specific hard drive or folder that you want to get to. So for this, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put this into the pictures folder on my computer. If you want to create a subfolder, so this is something that I definitely do. You have some default options of how it's set up. So usually when I do this, I set up in, I will call this, um, bridge items because that's what it's going to be for and I usually give things a date so I have no idea what today's date is so it is November 12th so 11-12-2018 and so the reason I do that is gives me an idea of when stuff is shot so this is the basic structure that I use to label all images when I work with them. So I can rename my files. So I have custom names selected here, but you can use anything that you want. And I'm gonna put this bridge. So it will rename all these images. So right now they have this as a name. So it will rename the file to bridge in whatever number it is. So I don't want it to start at 117. So I'm gonna hit 001 and Preserve current file name in XMP. This is for raw files. These are not raw files, but you want to preserve the current file name, file name, which is this, in your XMP file. So if you were already working on raw files and made some adjustments and it created this XMP file, it would switch this name with whatever name it had. Then we have the options to open in Adobe Bridge convert to digital negative. So if my image was were from a Canon CR2 file, they would convert them over to DNG. We can delete the original files, which I would suggest that you never do. And the reason is, what this means is it's gonna delete the images off your SD card. I don't usually delete the images off my SD card till I'm positively sure that that ingest or transfer worked out and that I've backed them up to a second drive then I'll go back and delete those images or save copies too so right here where we were putting images to this specific folder if we wanted to send these at the same time to our backup location I could select this and send them to a secondary location and then your metadata template so right now I have kind of you can have a basic one where it just has your copyright and stuff, or we can go to a more advanced one, or we can hit none. So for right now, I'll just use my custom metadata. And this is something I suggest that you use because it, it puts information that you need to have on your images. And once that's good, we can hit get media. So just like that, those images were transferred from my SD card to my hard drive and then launched in Bridge. And so these are ready to go for me to use. So these are just some formatting things. These are not anything that we actually need. So I can just go ahead and delete those because we're not going to end up using them. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go through our images and we, I would normally call and tag those, meaning that I would go through here. You can see I have this image to being displayed as a preview over here. And these are my thumbnails. Down here, I can control the size of my thumbnails. So if I want my thumbnails bigger or smaller, I can do that. So I have different methods. So you'll see right here, there's no lines in between. Now we have lines in between the images. So if I make them bigger. That's a personal preference. We can click on the next one, which kind of gives you some information about your image. This is giving you your shooting or camera data that's on the image and some just basic information. I don't usually use this because I don't care about this. I'm really just trying to see the one. 
and here it's just kind of a smaller version of the same thing with other information so if you had a rating such if I give this a one star or it will go ahead and give that rating so if I want to give this two stars or three stars or four stars it gives me a spot to do that we're just gonna come back here to this thumbnail so when I click on this all that information that I just had over here in this case is displayed in metadata we also have keywords if we've added keywords or want to add keywords to the image and so this information is right here for me to look at and this is my preview if I want my preview to be bigger I can easily just sort of slide this over and I'm I'm clicking on this line you see how my cursor changes from the pointer to that little symbol the line with two arrows that means you're on the right spot you're gonna click and hold and then drag your image and you could do the same thing with any spot here so if I want to click and drag this made metadata and make that smaller I can make my preview bigger and then as I kind of go through I can see that I can also use my arrow keys to sort of toggle through my image one specific thing when you are adding stars in bridge you actually can you don't add them to the preview you're adding them to the thumbnail so if I want to give this one star I can add that I think it is command one yes or command three so to give stars to an image the quick key here is command one this is for a Mac so it would be control one on a PC gives you one star control two gives you two star control three gives you three stars control four gives you four stars and control five gives you five stars and you can see here's my quick key here so that's the quick quick way to give stars to an image in Adobe Bridge so this is the essentials and this is basically most of the information that you have here so over here we have qualities for thumbnails meaning this right here so we have faster where we're using the embedded thumbnail that is in the JPEG preview high quality on demand always high quality generate 100 percent previews which would be the best so we're just gonna leave it here on always high quality for me the next thing that we have over here is a filter so if I wanted to filter these to show only one or more stars now you'll notice those images that I gave stars that have one or more stars are the only ones that I see that is a way to narrow this down so we're going to go back to clear filter so the way I kind of call and I'll show you this in some other methods is my right hand is on my arrow keys and I'm just toggling through in any image that I want to give a star my left hand just hits command three command two whatever it is so that way my hands are always on the keyboard and I don't have to constantly click and move my mouse around so when I call in basically any program my hands are on a keyboard my right hand is toggling through the images and my left hand is giving the stars now some applications you just hit the number one number two number three you don't need to hit the command or control key but this one uses command or control and then once I've gone through I'm able to filter those by any number of stars that I want and they will be the only ones that are displayed over here we're gonna go back to clear the filter so you have different ways to sort your images and so this has to do with this over here we can sort by file name by date created is what I actually prefer so they're sort of in chronological order so we can change ascending and descending order here depending on how we want that we can open a recent file we can create a new folder and we can delete you also have a search mechanism up here that you can search for images so that's the basic gist of the essentials sort of menu or column or way to look at images I do not use essentials the next we have is libraries and so you can see libraries work very similar it just change the way that we look at these images so we have our folder over here bridge items where it's being located at we have our metadata here and so you have different things that you can get into to metadata and we'll get back to that in a little bit 
So we have our thumbnail here and we can control the size of that thumbnail by adjusting these boxes to make things bigger or smaller. We can adjust our thumbnail size here or we can come up here and adjust our thumbnail size as well. Kind of two different ways to do the same thing. We also have these boxes that we can select. And then over here we have libraries so we can view by colors or different information. I do not use libraries. So the one that I actually do use is Filmstrip. So Filmstrip is a much simpler version. Um, basically all we have is the preview, the thumbnails, and a little bit of filter information and then the folders. And basically I kind of go through and anything that I like I will tag or give a star to depending on how much I like that specific image. So this is great when you shoot hundreds or thousands of images and you need to narrow it down. I basically, this is the first thing I do is color tag every shoot that I have. All right, so the next thing that we have is an output function and we're gonna skip that, but the output is sort of new here and it's really for, not for outputting or saving an image. It has to do more with like creating a contact sheet is more of your idea. So you have metadata in which you're viewing your images through its metadata and then by keywords to view images by keywords. Okay, and I'm going to click on this very first image that I have down here and we're going to go up to label. So you'll notice under label those those quick keys that I talked about before. So no rating. So if you had let's say this bridge and I gave it command five to give it five stars. If I decided to have this changed to zero stars because I don't like it anymore, I can go to label. I can either hit command zero or just go ahead and hit this no rating. I can decrease the rating by command comma or increase by command period, but that's not something I use. You can also add colors. So if you wanted to do this by colors, because you for some reason don't like stars, you can use select, which is command six, seven, eight, nine, and you can add colors to your images as well. And that will allow you to filter by color instead of using stars, or you can use a combination of both. So all that stuff is located up here in label. So next we're going to come down here to collections. So collections is interesting. Now, if, if you use bridge all the time, making collections can be helpful. Let's say for some reason that I love eagles, all right? And so I want to create a collection of all the eagle photos that I take over time. So what I'm going to do is click on my eagle and I'm going to come over here and you're going to have new collection and smart collection. So we're going to start off with new collection. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And it's asking me, include selected files in new location. I mean, do I want to include this in the new collection? Well, since it's about eagles and it's an eagle, I'm going to hit yes. If it was not an eagle, I would hit no. So I'm going to call this eagles. And now, anytime that I want pictures of eagles, all I have to do is select that. So if I come up here and select pictures, it's selecting the thumbnails that is that are on my pictures folder. But if I select eagles, it's automatically going to go ahead and select any image that I put in there of eagles. Now we're going to go back here. Let's say this horse is actually a picture of. Let's say this horse is actually a picture of an eagle. I can just drag this over and drop it into that folder. And now this Eagles picture or folder will have both Eagle photos. Yes, I know it's not an Eagle photo, but I'm showing you. You All you need to do is just drag your images over to a collection and it will put it in. It does not move that image to a different location. It remembers where that location is. It's kind of just like a quick access to get to either images that you use all the time or anything that you want. You also have something over here called smart collections. So we're going to click on a smart collection. And so it's asking me where do I want to look for the images at? That's fine. We'll say okay right there. So criteria. 
So our file name, we can use any of this information that we want to. Okay, so if I want the rating to be equal to 1 or higher, if, if it matches any of the criteria I'm at, include all subfolders, which I don't want, which, or I could want, in non-index files. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now it's finding anything that has equal to or one star, meaning one star. So that's my new smart collection, and I could call this one star. And so now anything with one stars will automatically get put in there. So if I come back here and I give this girl right here one star, and then I go back to one stars, you can see she is now part of my one star collection. So smart collections is basically a filter. So the next thing we're going to do is come in here to libraries and we have metadata. I'm going to just move this up so we have more room and we can see more of the metadata. It's got all kinds of junk in here that you have. We can also click on this and we can expand all or we can collapse all. So this is kind of your collapse and then you would just click on this. We can create a metadata template, which is something that you're going to want to do. So you saw this when I ingested my photos. So I'm going to hit create metadata template here. And you're going to use this for whenever you import your images into Adobe Bridge. So we're going to give this a, a name. So I will call this name or my name. And I'm going to open this file up here. So this is your IPTC core. And notice it has creator. I need to select this for it to be applied. If I don't have that selected and I just put a name in here, it actually will not go into the metadata of your image. And so I can fill out all this information here. And this is a lot of stuff that I have. So like, let's say I had something on the internet. Somebody wanted to use the image. Um, they would be able to find me through this IPTC core information. So we're going to collapse that. We have extension, which is other types of information that's in there. You have GPS, audio, and all kinds of different information that you can fill out. And once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and hit save. And that is your new metadata template. So once you have that information, when you import your photos, you can select that specific metadata template. It will automatically be applied, and you don't have to type it in every single time that you do it. Now, each image is going to be different in which it's going to have different keywords. So if you want different keywords, you're going to have to do those specifically. And it's made it easy here. They've kind of given you some just basic ones. But you can also, once again, come up here and add new keywords that you can add to images. We're going to go back here to libraries again. And we're going to go back. So if you want to append or change your metadata, you can go in here. So if I wanted to do either one of those two that I've created, or if you want to replace metadata with something else, you have the ability to do that as well. So sometimes what would happen is you would use some general metadata, but maybe if it was for a specific job, and you needed to put caption information or something specific in it, you could go through and just kind of apply that once to everything that you have selected. So that's a little bit on metadata. So in Filmstrip, we still have this information here. We have output. That's our metadata that we had here before. And that's basically the same as everything else. It's just that when we view the thumbnails, we're seeing the metadata and keywords. So if you want to add keywords to your image, it's really easy. You would just come in here. So if I wanted to add Ryan to that image, I'm adding Ryan keyword to this image. If I want to add Matthew, so I'm adding Matthew as a keyword. So you can see here, John Whitehead, Matthew, Ryan, San Jose. We'll click on this and San Jose is added for a keyword. This will be applied to the metadata of the image, or if you wanted to search for something, also all images from San Jose, it would be able to find these by using those keywords in your image. 
So the last thing, we're going to come back here and go to Essentials in our image. So we have our favorites, our folders, our filter, our collections, our thumbnails, our metadata, our keywords, and our preview. So the last thing that we have here is this output. And so the output is really for making sort of a contact sheet. So I'm going to select both of these images. I'm going to drag them up here. And so you can see what it's doing is it's it's making two pages and putting our images on that. I can change the paper size. So if I want this to be US letter, I can change this to US letter. So there's some custom templates. So if I want to do, so we have custom templates and I can select that. If I want this to be two up grading card or two by two cells, I can select that. And then you can see it's taking these two images and putting them in cells. We can change our image quality. We can control how the thumbnails are placed in the image. We can click on them for rotate for best fit. So all kinds of information. If you want to include the file name, you can. So notice the file name's gone or I can select it and we can change the font and some of the other information here. This is not something that I ever use. There's much better ways to create contact sheets. Actually, the contact sheet in Adobe Photoshop is a lot easier, so I would most likely use that. And personally, I don't use contact sheets anymore. I haven't used them since I started using digital, so it's not something that I want. I'm usually if creating a contact sheet, I upload to a gallery on the internet or a web page and that works a lot better for me. So that is the basics of how you use Adobe Bridge. A lot of the stuff that you might want is also located up here in the menu. So we can create a new menu, we can open recent, we can open our image in Camera Raw, which is actually pretty nice for a few things, I have to say. So we're gonna actually, we'll go back to Essentials here and we'll just click on in one of these images. So if I wanted to open this into Adobe Camera Raw, I can hit this and this will automatically get launched into a Adobe Camera Raw. And that works great for using HDR and I'll show you why if you ever watch an HDR video. So here's the rest of the stuff that you can do. So if you want to copy your images, place or move, that's all available there. So we have an, a sort of a simple edit menu. So we have some develop settings and information right here if you want to rotate your images if you have any color settings which is important so if you have something specific in color settings that you need to adjust to you could easily select these here so we can make this expanded so we get more stuff most of this stuff seems to be set up for monitor color and information like that so I'm just gonna hit cancel for right now I'm not gonna use that because I actually don't use bridge so we have a few menu here so we can do a full screen preview and which we do that we have a slideshow slideshow options so if you do want to make a slideshow you can come down here and hit slideshow and this would play your images as a slideshow I'm just hitting escape to get back to where I want to be. This is where you have sort of well, your view. If you want this to be viewed as thumbnails or details or as a list, you can change how that's viewed in each one of these programs. But we're going to do thumbnails. So we have stacks. I'm not going to go into stacks, but stacking is just putting one in. Like if you had four versions of the same image, you can put them all on top of each other so they don't take up so much room. The label was the thing where we selected the images before. And then you have tools. So if you wanted to use this, you can use this as well. So we can do a batch rename, meaning if we wanted to rename all of our images for some specific reason. If we want to create a metadata template, which we did before, if we want to edit the template, we can do that, all that information. And then the important one here is if you're using Photoshop, you can directly send this image into contact sheet, image processor, lens collection, load files into a Photoshop layers, merge to HDR, photo merge, or just whatever. 
So if you want to directly send images from Bridge into one of these specific places, you can come up here and select them. And if you just simply want to send an image into Adobe Photoshop, all you need to do is just double click on the thumbnail, not the preview. So double click on this and it will go ahead and launch and send that image over to Adobe Photoshop. As you can see here, I actually didn't have Photoshop um, set up on my computer, so it's just launching Photoshop and then my image is basically going to appear and ready for editing. So there we are, we're in Photoshop and that image is there. So I'm going to come back down here to Bridge and we are back to Bridge. And that's basically everything in here. So we do have some windows. Um, this window is allowing you to either hide or show different aspects of how each one of these little things is set up. So even though Essentials is like this, like for some reason, let's say I don't like keywords and I want to hide the keywords, I can come down to keywords and bam, just like that, keywords is gone. Hopefully that's helpful. That's the basic gist of how to use Bridge. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave those below. And like always, don't forget to subscribe.